All right, I'm back here with my sister Monique, and uh, we're getting real. Okay, Mo, so listen to me. Here is what I want you to understand about this whole thing. Yes. As we try to come through this, because what I want really is for you to come through, because I know who you really are. And so what I, what I want you to do is come through this with a different way. Because you, Monique, you my girl. I love you like a sister. I hate what's happening to you. I hate what they're saying that's not true. I want them to know that you are caring, that you're a great mother, that you are incredible talent. I don't like the fact that you've been blackballed. You can be unblackballed. You too talented to have to worry about all this, where the next one coming from. I want this to end for you. Well, I yeah. want it to end for you, Monique, yeah. because I love you. Because these people are doing it the wrong way, and you better than that. You are better than that. I probably should have called you as soon as, but I didn't. I got a lot of stuff going on, I so I didn't. When I did call you, I listened to you. But I began telling you at the very beginning, I think we're going about this the wrong way. Now, we keep saying stuff in the interim that keeps just making it worse. Hollywood know you talented. But it's making it worse for who? It's making it worse. For who? Okay, if you think it's cool, then it's cool. That's what I'm saying. But it's not cool, Mo. For who? It's not cool. For who? The fact that we sitting here arguing like this. We're not arguing. Okay, we're We're, discussing. You and and your sister, we having a conversation and mommy and daddy ain't here right now. And I'm going to punch you in your mouth. That's the conversation. Bam, bam. Right. I think what happens, though, is I've had to understand how to agree to disagree without being upset. And that's the thing. I disagree with my brother. I'm not upset with you. I love you. I disagree with the way Oprah, Lee, and Tyler did it. Cool. But I love that. I'll give you that. Now, guess what we need to do need? to move forward and fix this? Come on. These people owe you an apology. You owe those people an apology. <laughs> then we can move forward. Mo, well, listen to me. You are valuable to us all. You are valuable to Tyler Perry. You are valuable to Oprah, to Lee Daniels. We can't do this without talent. See, me and you, we talent. They can't do this without us. You take us out of Hollywood, they have to close some doors around here. It is not the same without us. You are too valuable. I don't want to lose your gift to the world you won't. because we're trying to prove a point when we can prove the point by doing it in a more loving way. That's all I, I want, Mo. I absolutely agree with you. 100%. The only way I know how to do it is loving okay. because that's all that's in my heart. Okay. Now, when I say it, you may not like how I say it. That's, but see, if it's in your heart, yes. love sounds like love. Yes. Yes. See, that's what. So, yes. so if it don't sound like it when you say it, See? that's cause it ain't. So this one we're gonna close out like this. I'm gonna try and arrange. I'm gonna do my best to get the conversations that need to be had between you and these people. So you can hear from them. I'm gonna then ask them would they say it publicly for the benefit of everybody so you can get the release that you need. Then I'm gonna ask you to tell these people and apologize for the, some bashing you done done. I know you don't think you did none, but you did. And when everybody can come to that, then I think there's a chance for it to move. I love you, Mo. I'm glad you came to see me. Looking back on it, I should have picked up the phone and called you more readily. I appreciate it. I, would, I, I probably should have done that. Thank Just you. looking on it, that's probably what I should have did. That's all I wanted. But I didn't. So now I'm here and moving forward as your big brother. I just want to help you, Mo. I swear to God, I didn't come here to bash you. I love you. I wish you well. And let's heal this thing and move forward so the world can see how great we all are. Ladies and gentlemen. This is a historical interview and I don't want to judge anyone. I just want to speak openly. I think that Steve Harvey meant good. Steve Harvey 
was trying to reach out, use his position and power in the media broadcasting business to help Monique. But if you look closely at the interview, Monique kept asking him, trying to help who, trying to help who, trying to help who. Because Monique felt that she was in a position and a place of innocence complete innocence and victimization and Steve Harvey was trying to say they without mentioning any names as his exact words were they owe Monique an ap apology and Monique also owes them an apology almost as if if you both apologize then we can fix this but the whole situation now and the result of that interview or conclusion of the interview is Steve is out of the industry for the moment he got fired twice allegedly he's lost his position of power in the media industry for now, maybe long term, he may be, as he said to Monique, I don't like that you're back blackballed. Steve Harvey now has potentially become blackballed by the they in the industry or the kingpings of media and broadcasting industry now it's interesting to like I said I don't want to judge anyone I'm just trying to understand what does this all mean who created this industry these 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 people of so-called power that control what we not only watch but the stimuli and the messages and the choice of what we watch not just on TV how it used to be on TV but now online streaming videos film reality TV and that's going to be a whole subject by itself when it comes to reality TV because all these things that media and industry and news and film and entertainment is putting together really affects our children it affects adults, it affects children, it affects people of all different colors and what I wanted to you know if you look at now the situation with Steve Harvey he's in a situation or in the same place now from that interview he's in the same position and place now as Monique and that's ironic that to come from a, a, a place at the interview where he's in the position of power to help her, wanted to help her, now he is in the same position as her. Potentially blackballed. Lost his position. And what that made me start to think about was the minstrels. Was Steve Harvey just another minstrel? It's a very crucial question because who are the they? 
who control the industry. Creating minstrels, choosing between so-called black, white, when there's nobody black or white on planet Earth. Is it a repeat, a repeat of the black and white minstrel show? Perhaps, you know, some people may not know what the black and white minstrel show is or was. It's all online. It's real. And it seems to be that everything still in the 21st century is still being controlled as to how things are portrayed. And this is beyond, beyond Monique and beyond Steve Harvey and beyond hip hop and rap which hip hop and rap to me needs to take responsibility for the genocide that hip hop is creating just look at the gang violence look at the way evening london england gangs who imitate and copy American gangs, shoot, stab, and kill each other, throwing up signals for postal codes over a postal code. So, because you come from a post, a different postal code, I'm gonna stab or kill you or shoot you, regardless of what color you are, even if you're the same color or close to the same color as me from the same country, ethnicity, culture. This is ridiculous. It has to stop. And Steve Harvey really should take a look and we've all been divorced and we've all had different situations with relationships no one is above another person. But Steve Harvey may need to take a look at what's happening when it comes to karma, when it comes to the things that you do in this life. In the way you treat one person over another. And it's quite interesting from the, the beginning of this video. Where his wife spoke about relationships with her daughter. And she categorically said to her daughter. No rap stars. No hip hop. Right? Now, allegedly... P. Diddy, who is 50 this year, is dating the daughter of Steve Harvey and his wife. And she's, what, 23? How did that happen? Again, in this industry... Lots of things to do with how groupies and bands and musicians get together. Again, is this freedom or is, is this enslavement? Are we learning the way of slavery and the minstrels? And how we're perceived as right or wrong. Just a question. No judgment. But I wouldn't be, if you noticed in this photo, 
The daughter of Steve Harvey has the same outfit on. So they were both at the same event. And apparently this was in Italy. Not too long ago. No amount of money would ever let me give my 23 year old daughter someone who's got a whole bunch of kids regardless of how much money he's got I'm not going to do that but that's what I wouldn't do would you? as you can see here on this boat it's quite clear These are grown men. Okay. The relationship here between Steve Harvey's daughter and and, and Diddy looks quite serious. If you look at also Diddy dating Cassie. There's a trend. This correlation. A pattern. What's the difference between Diddy and R. Kelly? I am not saying what R. Kelly has done is decent. Or allegedly done is decent. It's a lot involved around R. Kelly. I'm not saying that Diddy has done anything with underage women. I'm just saying in the industry. Something's wrong when it comes to the genocide of when it comes to the genocide of of how music is portrayed and hip hop and rap. Even rock. How demonic rock is, how demonic hip hop and rap is. There's not much difference. Just a different sound. Some people would agree with that. Some would disagree. But just look at the violence. Look at the murder rates. Look at the shooting of so-called black on black. Look how gangs over a postal code will kill another gang. Look at the way women are dressed. Where women now will strip and twerk for a dollar bill. They'll climb a pole for a dollar bill. Something's not right. And it's all been created by Jay Z, Master P, P. Diddy. And no one's asking questions. No one's saying, Take a look at your lyrics. Take a look at where the lyrics of rap and hip hop and the style and the, 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 the gangster images and the gangs and the guns and the drugs have originated and still have taken hold on a global basis across Teenagers and youth. Look at the Cardi B's. Of today. The Rihanna's of today. And I love Rihanna. But we've got to take control. Of the images. The stimuli. The dating. The. Groupies. The drugs. The violence. The jewelry. Now. People are, are killing other people for 
and robbing other people for jewelry. Someone will basically send a group of people to kill another person just to get back their jewelry. Just to get their jewelry back. That's crazy. Diddy's in a position to, to, to deal with these things. He was in a position to deal with things when it came to Tupac. He was in a position to deal with things when it came to Biggie. Right or wrong? Now the youngsters will pretty much do anything. And when it comes to money, money speaks more than morals and values. And it's painful. And it all comes back to how do we go forward as Steve Harvey was trying to address this in the interview and it just seems as if now everything just seems to be coming full circle around Steve Harvey and Steve Harvey's situation that now he's out of position of power he's got a lot of money but now his daughter's dating someone twice her age. Who's in a better position now between Steve and Monique? I would say Monique. And for, Min for Monique not to apologize to the kingpins of the industry or sell herself or her soul to the industry because this is really what it's about monique refuses to sell her soul or her life to the industry that's to me is a a really brave stand and I think Monique will win more all round for her personal integrity, for her personal stance than Steve Harvey. What do you think about the trends, the images, the lifestyles, the genocide? The violence, the drugs, the selling of your soul for money. If you're on YouTube, leave your comments. If you're on Twitter, LinkedIn, please share, subscribe, like. Thank you for listening.